Welcome to Focus on Health, a series of educational programs highlighting current health issues sponsored by the Department of Nursing at Salisbury University. I'm Dr. Mary DiBartolo, Professor of Nursing at Salisbury University and host of the program. I welcome back Carla Beardsley. Thanks for coming on the program again. Oh, it's great to be here with you, Mary. You are the Nutrition Program Manager at Mac Incorporated, the area, ag area agency on aging located in Salisbury. And you're here to talk again about a very important topic, um, healthy eating for older adults. And today we're going to focus on eating for strength. So you're going to talk about foods, and you brought some gadgets along to help seniors living in the community right. um, with cooking and eating well. So I think the first thing we'll do is just cover why is nutrition so important. I know we could talk for hours about that, sure. but just give us a lowdown on why it's so important. Well, poor nutrition as it causes a loss of, of lean body mass. And so this is so important for us because this is about our muscles and our abilities to do things. And as we age, we get frustrated when we can't do what we used to be able to do. And we sometimes don't realize that nutrition does play a part in our muscles and our bone structures. And so keeping that um, right up to the maximum is very important. Sometimes we don't realize that as we age, muscle loss just happens naturally. For the most part, people are building muscle and maintaining muscle till they're about 40. And after that, the muscle starts to decrease. So for example, people by the time they're 60 have lost up to 40% of their muscle, 35 to 50% is usually what we state. And this is just a natural phenomenon. And so we automatically need to know that we need, number one, to eat more high quality food as we're aging to keep that muscle tone and also to keep up the physical activity. They are hand in hand. Well, I know we're going to uh, show some exercises later, right. but everyone kids about opening the pickle jar, you know, and exactly. it's true. As you age, you actually lose um, some muscle strength in that thumb muscle, which right. explains why it's so hard to open jars and things. So we'll get to that. Okay. Um, so malnutrition, define that for us, what that actually well, means. Malnutrition is when the body does not get essential nutrients. And so this could be that they're missing calcium in the body is also malnourished in that respect, but it also means that they might be missing all the other nutrients and because they're not eating enough or the right kinds of food. So it's both quantity as quality. We also recognize that it, um, just weight loss does not identify malnutrition. An overweight person can also be malnourished and have this lean body mass um, muscle loss. That's a good point. I think right. people just assume, yeah. Um, let's talk about some of the normal changes with aging that might affect one's appetite and interest in eating. Truly, and so this malnutrition state could come with those losses, and one would be loss of smell, which affects appetite. We um, also recognize that with the loss of the ability to prepare foods with um, not using our hands as much, not being able to stand at the kitchen counter. Um, a lot of these abilities to, to shop um, also decrease as you're getting older, so it's not just the physical part of the body. But in that physical sense of the body, sometimes we lose our teeth, so we need to chop up the food more. Sometimes in the sense of the aging, we also um, lose our ability to digest the food, and this is not comfortable for a lot of people to lose those enzymes that they need to break down the food. And another important factor would be a lot of seniors are on medications that can affect appetite too. Um, and obviously you need certain medications, but um, obviously we're gonna talk about ways in which seniors right. can enhance their intake. Yes. Um, you did wanna mention a little bit that as um, people age, their sense of uh, thirst knowing that they're thirsty and so on diminishes, so they're at high risk for dehydration, which is part of the eating process part as well. Part of the process too, yes. And, and so with dehydration, as, as we're talking about, why is that so dangerous for people? And what happens is when a person is dehydrated, they can be weak, they can also um, have dizziness, and so here we have an increase, and the consequence of that is falling. And so we also know that the variables where the body is failing can lead to even more problems. 
and, and falls. falls. Mm. Can be so problematic. You know, yeah. One out of three older adults has the potential for falling. Is the, what the statistics state. So when we're looking at falls and nutrition, we can really make a big dent in helping somebody to prevent that um, horrible accident. Right, especially if they break a hip or something like that. It True. can really have consequences. So keeping people strong, helping their balance, right. and there's many things they can do, but we'll talk, we're gonna focus on nutrition today. So yes, getting back to nutrition can make you strong. So that's what we're, we're trying to focus and, and invite people to see that it's not just about eating for good taste, um, but it can make you strong. You are what you eat. You are what you eat. That's if you're always heard. energizing <laughs> foods and, and energizing um, nutrients, and that's how we can respond in our lifestyle. So speaking of foods, tell us about some of the foods that people can eat for strength. So again, when we, when we focus on strength, we know that um, the muscle building is, is essentially uh, a big part of that is protein. Um, the whole diet should be good. We need vegetables and fruits, we need grains, and we need all the, the nutrients that come with these foods. But the protein food actually has a big role in building muscle. It not only preserves the muscle, but it can build muscle if it's been broken down. And so in the situations where a person has been in, in the bed, for example, um, or injured, um, and it might be a disease that muscle wasting happens, but with good nutrition they can build themselves back up. We also know that the protein helps you to prevent, um, it's an antibiotic in a sense that it helps you prevent infections. And so again, we, we want the body to be as healthy as possible. So besides preserving muscle, it prevents infection. And protein gives that full feeling in a meal. So protein foods have gotten the highlight in the in our um, vocabulary of nutrition because we want people to put it into their meals. Um, it's important to know too that protein's not just meat. Right, tell us about some other healthy yes, sources of protein. Um, protein can come in in the dairy family. It's, uh, milk is very high in protein and cheeses. We can find it in eggs. We can find it in, in beans or legumes is another name. We find it in high quality protein actually in Peas. Peas are very high. Pea protein is a new protein, so that's a vegetable protein as well. And we also know that nuts, um, nut butters, for example, peanut butter and um, almond butter, these are sources of protein that we can put in, in our diet. You Besides know, eggs, the meat. Well, eggs got such a bad rap for so long, and now we're finding how incredible the egg is, right. excuse the term, but it's true. Eggs right. are just so healthy for you. The Most white, everyone you know. can have an egg every day and still be um, not, re not overdoing their, their limit for cholesterol. Any other foods you like to highlight as far as uh, well, quality? Well, I think the easiest foods, as you and I were, were mentioning our fast food diet, cheese is an excellent source of protein. It's fast. It doesn't require um, a lot of uh, preparation. We also can find some foods in cans that are good protein sources, such as the fish, the hmm. salmon that's canned, the tuna fish. Um, we also, know if you like mackerel, so some of the canned fishes, even if you restrict it to probably about four ounces a week, you will be safe with the mercury. Now you mentioned cheese, isn't that also good for the calcium and so yes. on that people need for stronger bones? Exactly, so it has um, a double benefit. And now we're, we also have the benefit of the Greek yogurts on oh. the, the shelf. And Greek yogurt has been fortified with vitamin D which helps to absorb that calcium. So that's where the Greek yogurt families have really taken over to add the benefit um, of the protein to the diet. The way the yogurt aisle has expanded yes. is unprecedented, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's all good. And it, it, you know, you can eat yogurt with a spoon, you can spread it on a piece of toast, you can um, at, you know, even freeze it and pretend it's um, ice cream. You can substitute it for yes. sour cream. And, That's true. You know, Put it on a baked potato. Things. So that little boost of protein can be added to lots of different foods. So now that we've talked about foods for strength, you're actually going to show us some gadgets and tips um, to help seniors um, do do better at actually preparing meals. Right. Um, when when 
when sometimes when seniors have um, been using their hands their whole life, many of us use our hands for, for work. We might type or sew, but the hands are muscles as well. And so to recognize that, that the hand um, needs some special attention, we can, can actually give um, the hand some attention by the equipment we use. The goal is not to, to overwork the hand, especially if it has some tendency to be swollen. So gripping the hand in a manner that's really tight for long periods of time can actually cause more pain to the hand. So the tool that you want to use would be one that has a wide handle. And I can demonstrate, um, if we look at this wide handle, this is going to be a, a lot different than the old-fashioned peelers that were very small. So the grip you get on this one is going to be much more gentle than it would with something of this nature. And, and again, this grip is one that will be safer for, so you won't cut yourself. And they're widely found in, right. in stores with right. the OXO brand and whatnot yes. that have the thicker handle. Yes, or, and so Walmart will carry these or Target and many mm -hmm. of um, the stores that are, are in, frequently attended by seniors. We also could buy what we call um, insulation pipe and just put some duct tape around it. And it can put, be put on any handle. And oh, so, so you this, can take a kitchen knife or whatnot right. and modify it yourself. Right. You can modify it. You can put it on your brooms. You can put this um, material on on an um, outside tool if you're gardening, for example. But the grip is, is essential because it just softens that grip with the hand. And that's relatively inexpensive, right. I imagine. Right. You can buy these um, for more. You can order them online for more expense. But the point of it is, too, when you're using and looking for knives, you want them to be as sharp as possible because a dull tool is not safe. And it also requires more energy. Um, and that's what we're trying not to do is to put a lot of energy in, in hands that are swollen or, or, um, or not. Um, in pain. And we oftentimes forget that the scissor, the kitchen scissors, is a great tool for cutting where you, if you don't want to get out a knife, you can basically um, make small bites of food with just chopping the little pieces to, um, to eat with the scissors. And this will, will be a good way to, to um, get bite-sized pieces. And you can also get and add vegetables to foods without and, adding a big mess to your kitchen. Using a, a scissors is an excellent tool for chopping up small foods that are easy to bite. Yeah, I don't think people think of the kitchen scissor as much as they do, you know, right. just chopping everything right. with a knife. Of course, they have nice choppers now, don't they? That they do have that? choppers, in, and one can buy something like this, which is a downward chopping motion. And, and so it, you're pushing with your body weight down on the counter, and it can chop up the foods very small. Now, is that an apple core? But it's you can an use apple it for core, chopping. but you can use it for chopping. And it has nice, um, soft handles, so that's easier to handle. You can chop up eggs. You can chop up, um, you said, the apple, but any small vegetable as well. The important thing to recognize is that when this tool gets dull, and it will, you need to throw it away. because. Mm. If you try to get the food out of a, a, this is a knife here. So you need to honor that and, and accept the fact that we really need to be careful. If the tool is dull, it can go in the trash can. That and, scares me. I'm a klutz with a knife. So. Right. And so even something like this, which is okay. dull in this yeah. part, it should go in the trash can. Okay. That's and good advice. it doesn't work. Right. Yeah. So, what about the chopper? I see you have a chopper there. Well, and, and these, these are available in the stores. They're about $8. Um, but what, what to know is, is that anytime you use a chopper of this nature, or if, even if it's an electric chopper, there's lots of parts to them. Mm. And, and keep in mind that this has to be washed. So there's, there's very sharp blades there. Yes. And so if you already are clumsy with your hands, be careful. So some of these gadgets might not be the right one for you. But it works very well. I like that gadget. Yes. This, this gadget does work. But again, remember, you have to clean it. Mm. And it is good for that downward motion, which is sometimes when we have limited abilities with our hands, it's easier to, to go downward with the hand. But again, one of the best things we can do for keeping our muscles in our hands is actually doing some exercises. And when we think of them stretching the, the muscles in our hands or actually making them more flexible, 
that can help us do a lot of things in our life. So one of those exercises simply, as you were mentioning, the, the muscle here is where we lose um, a lot of strength. So if one actually makes an L with the hand and stretching that wide base with the hand, you're going to get a nice stretch in here. And then flapping that hand in, just a nice bend in the hand will give you that stretch. And do this about 10 times. You can do this when you're watching TV, when you're standing in the grocery store line. You can feel the burn. You can going feel down. that yeah. burn. So just try that. Bend that in and go out, Keep making sure you have that nice L there. So the L exercise. The L exercise. What's well, let me show one? you another one. The L. You want to make an O. Let's, let's, let's do this way. So there's your O. All these four fingers come together and meet the thumb. So you get a nice O with your hand. And then what do you do? Stretch out? And stretch out. And, and we can do it this way too. So stretching that out again and bring those, all those fingers together. So you can do that while you're watching television. That's right. And then, and say you're, you're um, bored and you're in the doctor's office waiting for your appointment, you might just bring your thumb in and each finger in to your palm. Hmm. One at a time. And you'll really feel the stretch in the back of the hand. So there's lots of different muscles in the hand. And even though they're stiff and swollen, there's a perfect way to get that um, stiffness out of the hands in the, when you're um, struggling with arthritis. Some people have problems because of diabetes. Some people have problems because of Parkinson's. So the limited mobility in the hand really deters the preparation of food as well as other um, life's skills. And actually, uh, a stress ball is not the way to go. It's like really squeezing hard on a ball. You're saying these are actually Truly. better exercises right. than, or um, using something like right. that. A, a stress ball could work. This is a nice um, gadget for, for bringing the, the flexibility back in without really twice. Squeezing tight is not good, but just gentle squeezing, as we see here, that's good. And of course, we know we have gadgets to help us open up jars. And I think oh. you brought an example of a, of a more homemade, right. Here, inexpensive way. Homemade. Yeah, versus we, we, we know this is shelving, and we just cut little squares. You know, that could fit over. I'll just try this, um, this juice bottle. But it goes over the top and gives a nice grip. So it's basically giving you a better grip without having that, and it get, lets you turn in that respect. So and You can, can buy some, gadgets, but obviously that's a lot less right. expensive. If you than, buy shelving and just yeah. take a corner of it and make yourself some. That's nifty. Um, it's great for opening water bottles too, which sometimes tend to be tight and small. Small, so yeah, they make the them hand. small now. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but getting a good grip on the tool that you're using or on the, the bottle is important because you don't want to further injure the hand and the muscles by too much squeezing. Well, excellent information. Let's do a little plug for Mac, because okay. I know you do some programs there for right. seniors. So tell us a little bit about uh, what you do on the lines of this. Well, we, we do have a program called Happy Hands, and this is where we actually demonstrate um, ways to use and prepare vegetables with some of the devices, or just the, the safest way. For example, if you're cutting a green pepper, and the, and the easiest way to do that is to avoid those seeds. So we'll teach you how to do that in the class, as well as onions. And um, we'll talk about all these the nutrients in these foods, as well as showing you how to prepare the food. Um, so that's a fun class. And then we also have program now we're starting, which is called Stepping Up Your Nutrition. And this program talks about ways to add protein and fluid um, so that the, the muscle loss is, is over done. Well, very good. And I know um, Mac has a wonderful website where people can get more information. And then we'll post some other websites about healthy nutrition okay. for older adults at the end of the program. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you so much for being on the program. This is wonderful thank information. You. All right. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Focus on Health here on PAC 14.